All right, engineers, in this video, we're going to talk about the female reproductive system. All right, so if you guys look here, we're going to look at this from the anterior view. This right here, this fatty rounded region right here, is called the mons pubis. Okay, and it's usually got, it's going to be covered with hair. It might not be within all people, right, you know, uh, depending upon how much landscaping they do around that area. But anyway, uh, this is going to be the mons pubis, okay, the fatty rounded region there. Now, let's actually come backwards so that we can see a couple structures back here. So if you guys look back here, you're going to see this right here. This is actually the top part of the bladder right here. So this is actually going to be the bladder, okay? So the top superior part of the bladder. A lot of connective tissue right above, above it, right? Now, right here, you're going to see the uterus, okay? Now, there's different parts of the uterus. We'll see a better view of it in another model, maybe in a little bit in here, but you're going to see this part here is actually going to be called the fundus of the uterus. So this fat, rounded region right here is called the fundus of the uterus. This part right here is kind of like the body of the uterus, okay? The body of the uterus. And then you'll actually see that we have another part here called the ischmus of the uterus. We'll see that later. And at the bottom, we have the cervix of the uterus. So there's actually different parts of the uterus. There's the fundus of the uterus, the body of the uterus, the ischmus of the uterus, and there's what's called the cervix of the uterus. It's not really well seen on this model. We can see it in another model. I'll show you guys. Okay? Now, next thing is I'm going to turn it here a little bit. And I want you guys to see another structure here. So if you see here, this is actually the ovary. Okay? This is the ovary. In the ovary, you have ovarian follicles that are basically maturing and helping to produce what's called the female oocytes in the ovum, which would hopefully, the design is to be fertilized by some type of sperm cell, right? So again, that's the ovary. Now the ovary is connected to the uterus through this ligament right here. Let me actually bring it right here. You can kind of see the ligament right there, that white little structure right there. That is called the ovarian ligament, okay? It's called the ovarian ligament. And the ovarian ligament is actually going to be connecting the ovary to the uterus. Now, there's another ligament, and it's pretty much all of this, all of this part in here. It's a very, very huge ligament. It's actually made up of two components. One is actually called the mesovarium, and the other part is the suspensory ligaments. All of this right here is called the broad ligament. Okay, so all of this right here is called the broad ligament. And it's made up of the mesovarium and the suspensory ligaments. Okay, so now we saw those ligaments. We saw the ovarian ligament. We saw the actual uh, broad ligament. There's a ligament back here, which is anchoring the uterus to the sacral region, right? And this is actually called the uterosacral ligament or the sacral uterine ligament. It's whichever one. You can interchange them. Okay, so this ligament back here, which is anchoring the uterus to the sacral part, is actually going to be the uterosacral ligament or the sacral uterine ligament. Okay, so so far, which ligaments do we have right now? We have the ovarian ligament, we have the broad ligament, and then we have the uterosacral ligament. Okay, one more ligament here, and this is actually going to be right here, this ligament right there. This ligament right here is actually going to be specifically called the round ligament. Okay, it's called the round ligament. Now, the round ligament is important because what the round ligament does, it actually anchors the uterus anteriorly. Okay, uterosacral ligament anchors the uterus posteriorly. And then the actual suspensory ligaments and the mesovarium is uh, actually making up the part of the broad ligament, which helps to anchor it laterally. All right, and then again, you saw the ovarian ligament, which is anchoring the ovary to the uterus. All right, sweet deal. And again, we said that we had different parts of the uterus, the fundus of the uterus, the body of the uterus, the ischmus of the uterus, we had the cervix of the uterus. We'll see that again on another model. All right, so next thing is actually gonna be the fallopian tube. So if you look here, you see these little finger-like projections here? It's called the fimbrae of the fallopian tubes, okay? So they're important because whenever we get close to the ovulation uh, point, what happens is the uh, ovary is going to eject what's called a secondary oocyte in metaphase two into the fallopian tubes. And the fimbrae actually kind of stiffen and help to sweep across the surface of the ovary to move the oocyte towards the fallopian tubes. And they catch the actual uh, secondary oocyte or that ovum that we're gonna be trying to fertilize. Now, right back here, there's a dilated region. So there's this dilated region um, that we actually have of specifically the uh, fallopian tubes. It's called the ampulla of the fallopian tubes. So it's a dilated region. Now, it's hard to see in this one, but you actually have what's called the infundibulum of the fallopian tubes. So it's kind of like the stalk by which the fingers are coming off. So if you imagine, here's the fembrae. Whatever is holding on, so like this actual stalk-like portion here, it's really hard to see it, but it's actually gonna be kind of like a little stalk-like portion called the infundibulum that actually the little fembrae dangle from. But then a little bit behind that, there's this dilated region called the ampulla, okay? And that's where fertilization occurs, okay? So fembrae, the fallopian tubes, are connected to a stalk-like structure called the infundibulum, 
and then back behind that is going to be the ampulla of the fallopian tubes, which is a dilated region where the uh, fertilization reaction occurs. Okay, and then the fallopian tubes will continue downwards and go into the uterus through what's called the ischemis of the fallopian tubes, which you can't see here, but we will see on another model. All right, so we're going to look at one more thing before we go internal to see some of the other structures here. So remember, this was the mons pubis. What we're going to have here is we're going to have these uh, things called labia or lips, right? Right here is the outer lip, okay? So this is the outer lip, which is actually covered with hair. So it's called the labia majora. There's another one inside, which is called the labia Menorah, which is supposed to be not having any hair, okay? And then you can kind of see here, if I stick this in there, that's actually called the external, uh, you'll actually, I'm sorry, the vaginal orifice. So you actually see the vaginal orifice. We'll see that here in a second. All right, so I'm just turning it on its side a little bit. So you guys are just looking at the side over here, okay? Before we had it anteriorly, so the mons pubis is back here. We're going to be looking at it on the a side over here. So right here, you're gonna have this gland. It's called the greater vestibular glands or the Bartholin's glands, and they're responsible for producing a mucus that resides in a little space within the labia minora called the vestibule. Okay, and we'll talk about that. But again, this is gonna be the greater vestibular glands or the Bartholin's glands, and then just kind of covering them over them is a special skeletal muscle called the bulbospongiosis muscle, okay? So we would actually have the bulbospongiosis muscle. If you want, I can turn it over here so you can actually see the muscle. It's right there. Okay, and then there's another muscle right here called the levatory ani. Okay, all right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some of the structures internally. All right, so now we're taking a look internally here. So if you guys can remember, we had this was right here, the labia majora, the outer skin fold here, and this is the labia minora, the inner skin fold. Labia majora has hair, labia minora, no hair. Now there's a little space in here that we call the vestibule. So that space is in the labia minora is called the vestibule. And again, there was the glands called the greater Bartholin's glands or the vestibule, I'm sorry, the greater vestibular glands or the Bartholin's glands that were secreting mucus into this vestibule area, okay? Now anterior over here, you're gonna see this structure right here. This is actually erectile tissue. This is actually called the clitoris, okay? So the clitoris is actually erectile tissue, so it has corpus cavernosum in it that makes it up and it's actually riddled with a lot of blood vessels. And it actually has a little skin fold wrapping around it called the prepuce, which is basically like foreskin that's wrapping around this actual clitoris here, okay? And it's rich with a lot of nerve fibers. So under tactile stimuli or touch or erotic stimuli, this could be activated and it can fill with blood and become engorged, all right? So again, labia majora, labia minora, hair, hairless, vestibule, clitoris, all right. As we work our way upwards superiorly, we're gonna to run to this next part here. Remember this structure we talked about in the male reproductive system, that we had this thing called the urogenital diaphragm, which was made up of the external urethral sphincter, which is this tiny little muscle here. And then there's another muscle called the deep transverse perineus that makes that up. Okay, right here, you're gonna see that the female urethra is a lot smaller, a lot, I'm sorry, a lot shorter as compared to the male. The male has three components of the urethra, the prostatic, the membranous, and the spongy or penile, while the female has just a straight urethra here, okay? So this is the female urethra. And again, external urethral sphincter is made up of skeletal muscle and is controlled by the somatic nervous system. So we have voluntary control over this guy. So thank goodness it prevents us from peeing our pants. Okay, so again, urethra, external urethral sphincter. Then as we go upwards, we're gonna get over here to the actual bladder. And the bladder is made up of a very, very, very thick muscle here, this pinkish part here called the detrusor muscle. It's called the detrusor muscle. And it's also gonna be part of the muscularis externa, which is the muscle layer that basically contracts to expel the urine from the bladder. Inside of the bladder, you're gonna have what's called the mucosa, which has a lot of like rugae, which are a lot of these little fat little lumps in there. And the rugae, is basically trying to increase the surface area. Now, if you remember, the mucosa is made up of an epithelium called transitional epithelial tissue, which is very good at being able to stretch and distend as urine accumulates in the bladder. Then you, it's really hard to see, but you have two holes inside of the bladder. One is actually gonna be from the right ureter, and one would be from the left ureter. They're little holes, so they call them the ureter orifices. So let's imagine that this one here would be a left ureter orifice, and then there would be a right ureter orifice. And then the urethra form like a triangular structure. It's called the trigone. Okay, so the trigone is made up of the both the ure ureter orifices and the urethra, and the internal urethral sphincter, which is a little patch of smooth muscle right here, about in this area, it's going to constrict the uh, urethra and make the nice little triangular structure called the trigone. 
okay? That covers that. And then just for those of you who want, this is actually the pubic symphysis, which is made up of fibrocartilage. All right, cool. Now we're going to come back here. Now we're going to come back here and we're going to enter into the vagina or the sheath. Now the vagina is really short. It's actually only about three to four centimeters long, but it's very, very uh, distensible, okay? So looking at this guy, you're going to see that the vagina is actually going to made up, its mucosa layer is made up of a uh, stratified squamous epithelial tissue to resist against friction and abrasion, okay? Then as we move our way up through the vagina, you're going to see a little smiley face. See it? See this vagina smiling at you? This is called the fornix, okay? So the fornix is these little arches here, okay? And it basically forms what's called the external oz and the internal oz. We're not going to talk about that here because it's really hard to see from this view. But again, vi vagina or sheath, and it's going to have an epithelium made up of stratified squamous. It has a lot of elastic tissue on the outer parts. And then again, we're going to have the fornix, and that's going to be the arches here, okay? The smiley face. Then at the edge here, if I imagine I'm poking, imagine I'm poking this part here of the uterus. This right here is called the cervix of the uterus. Okay, so I'm poking this part of here. This is called the cervix of the uterus. Now what I'm going to do is, we'll actually hit a couple more things here so we can see it. Uh, but I'm going to take this piece off here in a second because it can actually get removed and we can see inside of the uterus. All right, so let's go ahead and do that first. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this kind of like the layering of the uterus. So outside, the outer covering of the uterus, the outer covering of the uterus is actually called the perimetrium. Okay, so it's called the perimetrium. It's actually made up of a nice, um, simple squamous epithelial tissue with a little bit of areolar connective tissue. So it's called the perimetrium. Now what I'm going to do is, so that you can see inside here, I'm going to take this little piece off here so we can see inside. All right? So looking here, you're going to notice this nice smooth muscle layer, nice little muscular layer right here. This whole part here. This is actually called the myometrium. And again, the myometrium is made up of a nice smooth muscle. It's good for the contractions of the uterus. Okay, during the actual expulsion process, during whenever you're trying to give birth. All right, and then in here, you're going to have the uterine cavity. So this is the uterine cavity. That's where the actual fetus will stay during the gestational period, right? So again, that'd be the uterine cavity. Now, the uterine cavity is lined by this actual simple columnar epithelial tissue called the endometrium. Okay, the endometrium. And again, the endometrium is going to be a simple columnar layer here lining the actual uh, uterine cavity. So again, endometrium, simple columnar epithelial tissue lining the uterine cavity. Myometrium is the actual smooth muscle layer. And then just to finish it off again, if I put this piece right back here on again, so this is going to be the perimetrium. And that's going to be, again, simple squamous epithelial tissue with a little bit of areolar connective tissue. All right, so now let's go ahead and look at some other structures here and uh, back in that normal view we had before. All right, so just for the heck of it, I thought we'd throw this in there since we did it with the male reproductive system. Again, this is going to be the anal canal here. Okay, and you're going to see these little anal sinuses, just these little grooves right there. And then you're going to have two muscles here surrounding the anal canal, the, actual, the most uh, lower part of it right here. This is going to be what's called the internal anal sphincter, 50. Okay, and basically what this muscle, and again, you can see it kind of like right here too. So that's actually going to be the internal anal sphincter, internal anal sphincter. This is actually made up of smooth muscle. So it's under involuntary control. When this muscle contracts, it's going to try to start uh, producing the actual uh, reflexive activity to want to release or evacuate the bowels, bowels, right? Now, who's preventing you from, you know, restocking the lake with brown trout right at that point in time? It's going to be number 51, which is going to be called the external anal sphincter. This is skeletal muscle, and it's under voluntary control. This is the guy that's holding the fort down, preventing you from going into your pants, right? He was going to wait for the, the appropriate opportunity, the appropriate time. You have conscious control over this guy, okay? So again, 51 is the external anal sphincter. He's under uh, somatic control or voluntary control because he's skeletal muscle. 50 is the internal anal sphincter, which is smooth muscle, okay? This guy will contract whenever the reflexive activities are occurring because of the stretching of the rectum. And then the external anal sphincter, you have voluntary control over to determine when you want to go ahead and, you know, paint the town brown. All right, guys, so to finish off here, I just want to highlight one last thing that's kind of hard to point out from everywhere. It's, it's kind of like a large area. It's called the vulva or the pudendum. It's consisting of a lot of different parts of the external genitalia. So to kind of list them off in an order, we're going to say that one part of the vulva or the pudendum is called the mons pubis. Another part is called the labia majora. Another one is called the labia minora. Then there's the space inside of the labia minora called the vestibule. And then there's glands called the greater vestibular glands or the Bartholin's glands that are actually secreting that mucus into that vestibule. They're also another component. 
of the vulva or the pudendum. And then um, we're also going to have the clitoris. Okay, And if you remember, the clitoris is the erectile tissue, which is surrounded by a little uh, skin folds, labial skin folds, which is called the prepuce. Okay, those are the main components of the vulva or the pudendum. All right, engineers, in this video, we covered a lot of information. I hope it all made sense. I really hope that it helped, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, please hit the like button, comment down in the comment section, and as always, please subscribe. All right, engineers, as always, until next time.